extended invitations to our Christmas Eve next week. Feel free to grab those in the lobby and pass them out. Maybe you, you take 10 or take 20. Pass them out to your neighbors. Pass them out to your friends. Pass them out to your enemies. Pass them out to your bad boss. Feel free to grab them in the lobby today. If your obnoxious brother-in-law comes over and eats too much and drinks too much and smokes too much, it just bothers you too much. But you can give him one of our Christmas service invites and say, you are the reason for the season. So instead of him being a person who makes me miserable, suddenly he's transformed into a point of celebration. And for Christmas, we wouldn't even be having this thing if it wasn't for him. And you know what? You might have other people that remind you also if you're sitting in a ball game and someone is spouting off inappropriately. Give them an invite. <laughs> They are the reason we're <clears throat> celebrating next week. And if you're in a restaurant and you get horrible service, leave a generous tip <laughs> and invite them. <laughs> you need to invite them. They are why Jesus, that's why Jesus had come to earth. And if you are really brave, give one to your mother-in-law. And so be clear, when I said you were the reason for the season, and I ju just don't mean you. I mean you, 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 and me. Because you know what, folks? When I look in the mirror, I see a person who's still working in progress. But there's a lot more darkness and deadness than I wish I was there. And so I hope you invite some people to our service next week rather than get mad at them because there had never been sin. Had there never been sinners, there would have never been a Christmas. And so I said, there's only one point to this message. The only thing that I want you to remember as you give out these invitations to the candlelight service next week, here's the take home truth. You are the reason for the season. We are the reason for the season. And how do we know that? Because in Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, a child is given to us. A son is born. In other words, God loves you so much that when he looked down and he saw your darkness and your deadness, he said, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to fix it. You know what we tend to do to obnoxious people? We want to lean away from them. We want to stay away from them them don't invade my personal space and God did just the opposite instead of leaning away from sinful people God leaned into our lives and said here I'm going to give you my son and through my son you can have forgiveness <clears throat> and 30 years Jesus walked among us and really saying anything, just walked around, just letting the sin of the world be on him. And after 30 years, he began to talk. And he talked about what his father is like. My father is someone who loves you so very much. And I've come to seek and to save those of you who are lost. 
which is every one of us. And then he said, you want to know how much he loves you? Then he went to the cross and he opened his arms and he said, this is how much my father loves you so much that you can have full forgiveness of your sins. And all I want to tell you about this Christmas, these people that you want to lean away from, Aunt Bethany's and Cousin Eddie's, if you're a follower of Christ, why don't you lean in? Why don't you give them an invitation? Give one of these, not in condemnation, but by saying, you know what? To show them that God loves you so much that if you had been the only person who needed a Savior, we'd still have Christmas for God. And He so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son. If you would believe in Him, you don't have to perish, but you can have eternal life. And I would love for you to stand up with me. And I'm going to say a prayer. Directed your love toward us and sending your son to die for us. And the Christmas is not for the sake of Jesus. It's for the sake that he died for us. And I thank you, Father, that you looked at us while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so, Father, give us grace, give us patience, give us mercy to deal with all these people in our lives that mess up Christmas. And instead, let us not see the points of frustration. Let us see the points of celebration. And this is the whole reason we have Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing.